To become an orientation master, there's a few things you need to consider on every object you're gonna go through and start orientation on. Orientation, orienting, or how does that work? Orientation is like I get a new job. If I orientate it, English is hard sometimes. Well, if I'm gonna rotate my model in the proper way, the first thing I wanna consider is to preserve details. The details that I care about the most is like the face, weapons. If I've got a wing like this one, I care a lot about the wings. Uh, so I wouldn't wanna print this down like this. I would wanna print it up like that because those are the things I care the most about. Preserving details is number two. Number one, number one is preserving details. Number two is reduce the amount of supports being used. If you've got something that's big and you lay it down flat, you have to use a lot of supports. If it's more pointed up, let's say, if this was like this, I wouldn't require a lot of supports on the bottom. If it's printed like this one, I only have to put a little bit of supports here. And that leads into number three, which is reduce overhangs. The more overhangs you have, the more supports you need. So if you could find a way to reduce those, it all kind of comes together to make you very good at orientation. Number four is, it's number four because it's really, it depends. And this is hollowing holes. So if you aren't considering where you're gonna put the holes in the model as, well, you hollow it, you're gonna have a bad time Generally, it's a good idea to do the hollowing in the holes for first before supporting just in case you forget the step or you realize, oh no, I have to put a hollowing hole uh, in a place where it's going to be super obvious. And number five is a little bit of a tricky one, and that's to reduce cross section. Sometimes by actually uh, rotating object down, you can increase the cross section, especially if you don't plan on using hollowing. I'll have some examples for that later in this video because it's a little bit hard to explain right now. Number six, this is also a little hard to explain right now, but it's going to be mostly for engineering parts. Sometimes you can actually ignore one through five. Uh, some engineering parts require really high precision, on that one, you mostly wanna print them straight up. It's the best way to get, well, depending on the shape of the model, it can be the best way to get the most precision. And optional for me, because I don't really care, reducing print time. I don't care because I want the model to, or the end result to be, I mean, I'm printing it for the model, I want it. So I don't really understand the concept of you know, maybe laying things down flat so they print really quickly at the cost of damaging the overall product that's gonna sit on my shelf for, you know, years. So that little extra print time to me is not really important, but for you, maybe it is. So that's why I would say optional number seven, optimizing print time. Now I'm gonna use a primitive just to kind of show two reasons of orientation and what you're trying to avoid. Of course, one of those is anything that's parallel to the build plate. Something like this, if we try to print it and support it, it's gonna have some issues. So of course we want to avoid anything like this. But here the issue is if we rotate it, do the whole 45 degree rule, uh, which I'm not a huge fan of, and we look at it, now what we did is, yes, we removed the parallel to the build plate problem, but we also massively increased the cross section we have to deal with. So yes, we removed the parallel to the build plate problem, but we created a couple new ones. One being the surface area we have to support. The next one, and this one might surprise you, is we've actually increased the cross section that we have to print. It's kind of like tank armor. The more it's tilted, the larger the cross section of the object. Hollowing can help, but sometimes if you're printing a mold or something like that one, hollowing is not an option. So there's another way to get around this. Instead of orientating it this way, which creates all these problems, why don't you orientate it like this and eliminate pretty much all those problems. The cross section is the same and we really don't have much more to support. And now we also remove that whole parallel to the build plate problem. Now, because this is a corner, it's not gonna look great when it prints. Any corner that's pointed straight down and you put the supports along the side of it, it's gonna flatten out a little bit and have some damage. But let's pretend maybe this is a picture or a mold and we want that corner to look really, really good. What you could do is put a primitive there to kind of thicken it up. That way you could sand down the primitive and get a perfect corner every single time. So for the next example, I grabbed this Leonardo from the Lychee Library and I brought in just a few components of it. So first, I just wanna start with the sword. It's a really easy one. And the way it was orientated originally and what I see often is where it's laid down on its back in order to put a bunch of supports across the blade. However, this blade really can act like its own support if we orientate it up like this. This way, we only have to put supports on the very bottom and the whole blade itself, although tall and it's going to increase the print time, will have no support damage on it all and it's gonna print very beautifully. In this way, we're gonna have the best of pretty much everything. Next, I wanna talk about this piece of armor right here. The way this was orientated was more like this, and so it needed to have a lot of supports underneath and as well as some on the, on the top here, on this leading edge just right here. What I didn't like about that was one, the amount of supports it required, and two, because this is the top of the model right here, where we're looking, right here, 
any support damage that's placed here is going to be noticeable because when you're looking at the model, you're looking down on it. So I really want any support damage to be underneath. It's not like I'm picking up my model and looking at it, you know, from that way. That's that's just a little bit silly. So what I would end up doing with this one is I would rotate it like this. I'd put it more up and I'm just gonna look at it and what I'm looking for is I don't want any supports to be on the front. I want the front here to really not need any. So I'm, of course I have to be uh, aware of these overhangs. So I'll probably put it just a little bit back just so these overhangs were a little bit smaller. If there's a little bit of overhang, it's fine and that right there is more than fine. So from here, any support damage is going to be on the back and on the key. It's not gonna be noticeable. The top is gonna to be nice and perfect and smooth. So this would be the optimal way to orientate this particular object. Next one is this foot here. Now, the issue I have with the way this is orientated is that there, the overhang here is on the top of the foot. Again, it's the way you look at the model when it's done. The top of the foot is, we are looking down on it, you're going to see it. We've got a key on the bottom and a key on the top. So in reality, there's really no reason not to flip this around, do a 180 with it. In this way, we're not doing any additional overhangs. It's not gonna be any more difficult, but all that support damage is gonna be gone. Also, it's really important to remember, any surface face in the build plate is gonna be lower quality. Sometimes lower quality means a lack of accuracy. Right here, there's a key that goes into the leg. We wanna make sure that that uh, cups together really, really well so we don't see the seam when it's done. The bottom, you're not gonna notice so much with contact with the base, but here right on the leg where the foot makes contact with the shin, we really wanna make sure those two surfaces come together beautifully. So this is how it orientate this particular object. The next object I picked is from Printed Obsession. I grabbed this one because I think it's very common for what you're gonna run into and it's kind of difficult. The very first thing I notice is that arrow and of course the bowstring, then the arrows on the back, this little thing coming down and it's got a cape. It's kind of got everything that we don't really like including a big long beak that points down, another you know thing sticking out. We've got an arm with a bunch of overhangs on it. I think this is a rather difficult one to find the perfect orientation for. First thing we need to do is we need to identify and kind of prioritize the different high risk spots. So what are the different, what are the most high risk spots? Well, for me, the high risk spot is gonna be the arrow, the beak, uh, the bowstring are the high risk spots because those are, those are the thinnest. Also, they're probably gonna be the most noticeable if there's something really wrong with them. So let's prioritize those first. So first thing I'll do is, well, you know, if, if I was only pretty good arrow, it would look like that. But of course now everything else is broken. Um, you know, that fixes the arm, the arrow, but this bowstring is garbage, this bowstring is garbage. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's garbage like that one and the feet are garbage, so that's not gonna work. So we have to basically, what's the difference between the legs and the two different strings here? And so for this one, I'm gonna probably end up going, you know, just kind of eyeballing it. There's no, it doesn't need to be super perfect. It just needs to be to a point where it's gonna be good enough. So probably like that. Now the next thing I want to do is, well, are there some details that I need to be able to reach around with supports? What I don't want to do is I don't want to build supports off the model. I want all of my supports to be, have a path to ground. So if I turn like this one, I look at it, I say, okay, well, there's not much on that side other than, you know, that we got a big overhang there. And here we've got the quiver that's an overhang. So I really want to make sure I can access the quiver. So if I kind of turn it like that, um, now the next thing I see are these arrow shafts. If I go to this view over here, I can kind of see my overhangs. There's a lot of overhang on the arrow shafts and a lot of overhang over here. And just to make sure, are there any other things that I'm worried about? Let's look at it from the side. It looks like all this is gonna mostly print by itself. You know, if you got a support right here on that, it's gonna, you know, that's gonna print all this, this, I can reach that. So really the only concern I have here are these arrow shafts, the fact that they're not the greatest. So I can play around, can I make it better? You know, if I do something like this one, you know, what are those arrows doing? They're really not moving much. And how much am I really, you know, sacrificing to get those arrows a little bit better. And what I'm sacrificing is the arrow itself. And I don't wanna do that. That's my higher risk thing I care more about. So I'm probably gonna have these arrow shafts not be in the most optimal situation and prioritize the legs, this guy right here, and the whole bow. And I think this is actually gonna be the best way to do it. The uh, cape right here is so thick, I'm not terribly worried about it. Of course, right here on the bottom, it's not gonna be the best. But the way we kind of counter everything, when you're looking at this model, you're gonna be looking at it mostly from this perspective, from the top. I think this is going to be the best way to orientate this object based on everything I kind of just went through. For this one, I grabbed it from the library. This is the Darth Vader from Trident Studio. And I picked this guy specifically because he's got some challenging parts about him. Again, overhangs are our enemy with resin 3D printing. We really wanna to try to avoid them as much as possible. But this one's kind of, this one works against us. If we rotate it like this on its back, we get a pretty good thing where his arm's facing up, but now we have an issue with the cape. And the cape, what I'd really like to do is make that cape down as much as possible. So if I put, I only have to support that leading edge right there and the rest of it, 
you know, just like this, if I only have to support this leading edge of the cape, then the rest of it's going to print without much issue. But of course, any support damage on the cape, I probably want on the inside and not on the outside. So if I look at them from the back, most of the supports are going to be on this half of it, not on the back. But the issue when I do this is now, uh, well, his legs and the other cape are kind of an issue. Now I have to put supports all over the back of the cape. That's not as much of an issue because if you're looking at it from the back right here, this the larger cape is going to cover it up, but still not optimal. So we have to make a decision here. We have to try to find a different way to do this. Uh, and also anything that's printed straight up, is going to lose a little bit of accuracy due to kind of some of the stepping. So what we can do here is first, let's look at the right way to do that lightsaber. You know, we can do it like this where the lightsaber is pointing straight up. That's going to make it print really, really well. But it's really, I mean, this lightsaber is going to be a pretty important part, but it's kind of small and kind of thin. So it's not the biggest uh, worry here. I think the biggest worry here is really getting a really good cape. So we kind of have to split the difference. And so what we want to do is let's just get a rotation from the side. I'm going to do a uh, side view, hit O on my keyboard. So I get the, um, I want the orthographic view so I can get a really uh, just kind of a, a, a 2D preview of what this looks like as I try to find uh, shapes that are self-supporting. So shapes that are self-supporting are going to be like a Y shape where you can support the base and it comes up almost like a tree. A tree doesn't need supports on its leaves. They're self-supporting and shapes where it can support, you know, the two bases and they, they kind of come together or like an arch. Arches are very strong. So we're looking for arches. We're looking for Y's. We're looking for V's. We're looking for shapes like that. And right now what we have here is we have a bit of an arch that's going to be mostly self-supporting. And from the side here or from the front, we're kind of getting a little bit more where we have to trade off between the arm we have to put some supports here and the arm going up which doesn't need any supports so really the only issue i have right now is the lightsaber the lightsaber is going to need some supports across the entire thing so let's just go a little bit more to try to mitigate how much support i have to put on that lightsaber and of course you know we have to make that that conscious decision of how far back do we go for the lightsaber in the back cape versus the front cape and so what we're going to do is we're kind of kind of split the difference and look for that v shape and that art shape right here. That right there is going to give us probably the best orientation for this guy to make sure we get a good print when we're done. The next thing we have to be aware of is if there's any sort of overhang, let's say his elbow came down right here and I couldn't reach the elbow because the cape was in the way. I would then have to rotate it enough to expose that part of the arm if it needed a support. So something to keep in mind on that one as well, because it sucks to get started supporting, get halfway up the model and realize you don't have a path to something, to a, a big island. So always check for islands, large islands higher up that you can reach them from the build plate. On this particular one, that arm doesn't really need it, but maybe this point right here does. So I could make it just to a point where that, um, I don't need to, I don't need to be able to see the point from here, but I don't want it too far under the cape. About right here, a support should be able to reach around the cape and support that little tiny triangle right there. So right here, this should be the best orientation for this particular type of model. Now let's change gears for a second and talk about some engineering parts. In this example, I've got this rim right here. Now I tried printing it this way initially and I really wasn't happy with the results because of the amount of support damage that was on this rim. And I really wanted the pictures of this to be beautiful on both sides without having to require a lot of sanding. Especially for this particular model, I wasn't planning on painting it and so I needed the resin to be really, really clean when it was done. And so what I did do is I kind of broke all the rules of orientation, but you'll see that sometimes that's the right move. Now you can see here, this is why I broke the rules of orientation. If we look at it from the side, you'll see that these are all parallel to the build plate, which is a bad rule uh, or a bad thing to do. You don't want to do things parallel to the build plate. You always want to do an angle. Well, the reason why this worked and it did work very, very well is because this was designed where everything was going to be flat sand when it was done. So yes, there's going to be some blooming and yes, there's going to be some damage, but the final product when it came together was going to have no support damage and very few layer lines. This is an example of where in engineering, sometimes the rules can be broken. Sticking with the same model, I have this windshield right here, which is really, really thin. I ended up supporting it this way because what I wanted is to not get any supports on any part of the product itself, only on the back. This ended up being more than enough to print this thing because it was so thin. I ended up printing it out of a clear resin and it ended up working out really, really well. And here you can see the final results where the wheels right here have no support damage on them. They kind of, the way they connected together made it so that you really couldn't see anything. And even the tires, it all came together really, really well. So this is an example where engineering sometimes has slightly different rules than what we would do for other models. 
As I stated in the beginning, this is a topic I could really go on and on and on and on about, probably for days, and it's pretty complicated. So if there's anything that I said that you maybe struggled with or you want to know more about, let me know in the comments, or you could join us on our Lychee Slicer Discord, and you can reach out to me there. And as always, remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, as well as our other social media. And thank you for watching, and have a good day.